I like to play baseball. I like to wrestle. I like to play basketball. My neighborhood gets up and we play kickball and run down. I like being in the woods. Um, I like bike riding. I like lacrosse, playing with my friends. I like swimming. I love wrestling. All the mothers who have many kids always have that one child that kind of makes you just hold your breath and, and say, oh my gosh, what is he doing? And that's my Nathan. In 2010, probably in July, he started complaining of headaches. They were infrequent at the time. And, um, I, you know, I'm a mom of six, so if it's not bleeding and there's no blood and he's not vomiting and he's not crying, I'm saying, you'll be okay, let's, let's wait this one out. And he did that for a couple of weeks. I came home from work one day to find Nathan playing cards with his friends at the kitchen table. What caught my eye was Nathan had an ace bandage wrapped around his whole head. All right, maybe I'm going to pay attention now. It was a bad headache, not normal. I had eye pain behind my right eye. I thought if I kept it closed or had a little bit of pressure on it, the pain would go away. His pediatrician said, this is something you better take him to Children's. Um, I'd like you to see a neurologist. We were re immediately referred to Dr. Sitwak and he had an opening that day. He did a, maybe an hour long exam from head to toe. He looked at me after the appointment and said, I, I want you to have an MRI. And I said, okay, we'll do that. And he said, no, I want you to do it now. Nathan had the MRI, and by that evening, Dr. Sitwak called to talk a little bit about Nathan's results. And so that night I spent hours, all night, in front of the computer, researching what could this be. We presented his case in a clinical case conference in which several of our neurology colleagues, neurosurgeons, neuroradiologists, and neuropsychologists we all come together, discuss a unique case like Nathan, and then get input from each member of that conference. So after we looked at the scans, MRI, MRAs, and based on the history that was provided, it was determined that this indeed is a condition, Moya Moya disease. And the first step was medical management, and the second step, or the definitive treatment, is corrective surgery. When we got into the office, um, I wasn't prepared to hear that Nathan had Moya Moya. Dr. Sitwak referred us to Dr. Stephanie Green. The surgery that we do is called a peel synangiosis. It involves dissecting a branch of the external carotid, which is called the superficial temporal artery, out of the scalp. We protect it while we take off a piece of bone beneath it and then we open up the dura, the coverings that separate the bone from the brain, and we open up the arachnoid, a membrane that holds the spinal fluid within, and then we suture this vessel very carefully down onto the surface of the brain, put the bone and the muscle and skin back together. <laughs> when I first met Nathan, his mom and I sat down and we talked a lot about his case and what his films showed. This was surgery on the brain of her child who, as far as she could tell, had nothing wrong up until he had the MRI scan and the headaches had started a few months before that. I just asked her, just this, explain this to me as a mom. Tell me what this means in terms for Nathan. I want to understand this a little bit better. And, and she did. She was able to put it in terms that I could understand, in, in words that made sense to me. Not words I wanted to hear, but words that I could understand. She was really relieved to find out that we had somebody at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh that knew how to do this procedure and had done it a lot of times. I just knew that this was where I belonged, and this was where Nathan was going to be. I think this was where Nathan was going to be safe. Dr. Green confirmed 
that Nathan would indeed need brain surgery and that it would have to be soon because he was in grave danger of having a stroke. She wanted him calm and still until the surgery. He went from being a normal kid with a headache to a kid with a disease, a very, very rare disease. I was scared at the beginning, but then once it started going through, I kind of, it was just easy for me. You know, Children's is very good at dealing with not just the child and their needs, but also the needs of the parent, my needs. And I had a lot of needs. I was, I was panicked and it was, it was stressful and it was overwhelming for me. I can't imagine what Nathan was going through. And they had to deal with both of us and they did it very well. After surgery, like quickly, I felt better. The eye pain was gone. The headaches were not as severe as they were. They were normal headaches, not like before. And I just felt better. I had more energy to do stuff. We do a test sometimes called a Diamox perfusion study, which gives us an idea of whether a person is using their maximum blood flow to oxygenate their brain or not. And preoperatively, he had evidence that he was using every bit of vasodilation that he could to oxygenate his brain. And post-op, we were able to show that he had a reserve, that he was able to dilate his vessels further and increase the blood flow to his brain if he needed to. We were very well prepared to go home and move forward with what Nathan needed to do to get better. We brought him home, and there was never a bigger, brighter smile in the world. And now, now this boy is, is back to life. He's alive and well and walking and talking and happy and bad. And, you know, he's, he's exactly where he needs to be. He looks so healthy and they're happy. And it, it's a real blessing for me to be able to make a difference like that in somebody's life. Nathan has big plans. He'd like to be a mechanical engineer, and he wants to build something amazing. <laughs> and I think he'll do it. I really do.